even behind on my behind on my reviews of the Rivers of London novels. Only and it's related works. Living Dinner review of the first book, which is released in the U.S. as Midnight Riot, and the second novel in the series, Moon Over Soho. So I'm going to do a blanket review of the first seven novels, which make up one massive story arc, which I'm going to call the Faceless Man arc. The Peter Grant novels have a very different take on urban fantasy than a lot of other works in the genre. It The genre tends to take a handful of main tacks. There's paranormal romance, like more, the Mortal Instruments series. There's supernatural alt noir, like the Harry Dresden series. Um, you still have some remnants of the um, fake court interaction with the uh, human world um, sort of thing that Mercedes Lackey wrote back in the day. You um, and still writes, and also works like Shannon McGuire's, which sort of take another step from that with people who have interacted with or who are interacting with the supernatural world and sort of coping with it. Um, I almost want to call it urban fantasy therapy, but that's not quite right. And you have works which are urban fantasy, but are also interacting with complicated elements of um, the BIPOC communities and their histories, um, whether it's, uh, for example, the Chinese American population in uh, the uh, Gina Lo novel, or with the um, actually I, I would call love say that uh, Lovecraft Country would fall into, under this category as well. While yes, that relates to H.P. Lovecraft and cosmic horror, it also fits in here uh, as well. Well, the Peter Grant series takes a different tack from all of those, and possibly a new one that I haven't seen that one much used before, which is the paranormal police procedural. The protagonist of the series is Peter Grant, a police constable who later becomes a detective for the London, London Metropolitan Police, or the Met, or the Filth, depending on um, who, what you want to call them. After a supernatural encounter with a ghost at the start of the first book, Midnight Riot, or Rivers of London, Peter Grant ends up being attached to the branch of the Met, which previously basically consisted of one guy, related to investigating the supernatural, known as the Folly, and gets trained in magic by the head, and at that point, the series' only member of the Folly, Thomas Nightingale, a veteran of the Second World War, who at some point has started aging in reverse. Furthermore, over the course of the series, Grant ends up learning that the work of the Folly isn't to draw an American comparison like Grimm, where you're dealing exclusively with supernatural entities that are out stepping out of line and hunting them, and instead he is getting like partially into you know, community policing, um, working with the members uh, working with the members of the supernatural community and just getting along with them and being someone who they can turn to to help and someone who can sort of help um, manage situations as or mediate situations. And then on top of that, you also have magical practitioners from outside of the Folly, um, who at the time, Thomas Nightingale, had thought there were no more left. And some of these people have gotten into crime with the ringleader of one of the early groups that was encountered and the main focus of this story arc being a person known as the faceless man who was introduced in moon over Soho, the second book. This all leads to the main thrust of the series from the second book onward, finding out what the faceless man is up to, finding out who they are and stopping them. All this done within the framework of the London metropolitan police force, which means in turn, the way the procedure of the Met comes up over the course of investigations, both in the way how the Met is supposed to handle crimes, how they do handle crimes um, for good or for, and for ill, and also where things fall apart when all of this steps in the territory of magic, or as it's described um, fairly early on by one of the detective inspectors who Peter works with, uh, or rather detective chief inspectors, I should say, that Peter works with, <clears throat> Sooty Bullocks. An interesting bit with all of this, in terms of something that comes up here that isn't covered, but doesn't come up a lot 
in urban fantasy outside of the areas where it's specifically dealing with the cultural histories of immigrant populations in the context of urban fantasy is that Peter Grant is black and one of the first real practitioners of uh, in the UK who is a person of color for quite some time. Specifically, he his um, his mother is from Sierra Leone. Similarly, a lot of the supernatural beings Peter Grant works with within what is referred to as the Demimond, which is Latin for underworld, because Latin is the language of magic, and to distinguish it from the more mundane criminal underworld, are people of color as well. This could get into a very interesting discussion of race in policing in the UK, and if they get into it, I must admit that due to my own cultural background as an American, I kind of missed it. I hope this comes up in later works, but I, from in these seven, it doesn't come up as much there as I'd like. However, some of this race stuff does come up, though, in the motivations of the faceless man. Without spoiling who they are, um, their ultimate goal is basically revealed to try to use magic to make Britain great again. By cranking up the magic level to take Britain back to the glory days of, Arthur, of King Arthur. It's a very fascist viewpoint, though I unfortunately feel that it's like left for the audience to just take it as read that it's fascist. Nobody really calls it out and goes, you know, you're a bit fashy there. In particular, also, like, we do get some call outs with the faceless man, though, making some racist remarks about Peter and one of his partners on the force. Um, PC and later Detective Gleed, who is a uh, Somali woman who is also um, Muslim. And uh, he applies some similar language to the Demimond, but that's the majority of it. It's never like as much in the forefront to that extent. That said, it's not like Ben Aronovich necessarily has to lay out his progressive bona fides here. Um, one of the things that came up when this book was a pick on the Sword and Laser Book Club is Ronovich is married to a woman from Sierra Leone, and he wrote Peter Grant as a character for their son to have someone who, um, so that the, their son could see themselves, someone like themselves, in a book, in, in particular in fantasy, in urban fantasy. And even before, well before that, Ronovich was a writer for Doctor Who during the latter portion of the Seventh Doctor's run, leaving with some of the more very heavily social commentary works. Stuff like Paradise Towers, Happiness Patrol, Greatest Show in the Galaxy, Remembrance of the Daleks, and Silver Nemesis. That's stories with, again, very pointed commentary and social commentary, and two stories with literal and met with both literal and metaphorical Nazis in the story. Literal Nazis and Silver Nemesis, metaphorical Nazis in remembrance of the Daleks and also kind of a metaphorical Thatcherite fascist state in happiness patrol. I would have liked, again, I would have liked to have something, somebody call out the faceless man, particularly in later stories as a skinhead in a posh coat of paint, but I, it's a bit late for that now since all the books are in this arc are out still. I appreciate the fact that these books provide a very different form, at least in my experience, of the urban fantasy mystery style story in terms of both well, style and setting. I'm definitely looking forward to reading the future books in the series. I've already read books uh, eight and nine, and I'm looking forward to ten. Um, and going on from book seven onward, I'll be reviewing those one at a time since we don't have a definite arc together yet, necessarily. All these books are available through Amazon.com and uh, Libris and your friendly local bookseller. Um, though for some reason, as of this um, recently, the page for the series on Amazon appeared to only have the six, the first six books. Seven is on there, but it's listed separately for some reason. All of the books are available in hardcover, paperback, Kindle, or Nook, or whatever and audiobook editions, so whatever way you want. I highly recommend the audiobooks. The reader, uh, Kobna Holbrook smith is fantastic. One of my top audiobook readers. Straight up. 
there's also a series of graphic novels published through Titan Comics as well. I've actually, the some of the art that I've used for this is from those. There's some fan art used as well. Um, and I do recommend picking those up. Also, I use covers um, from some of the comics as well. Um, those are written by the other of um, part of the big collaboration that Ben Aronovich was on for Doctor Who, uh, Andrew Cartmel. And um, I, you know, I recommend reading them. You, I would say that you can't read the comics necessarily without having read the books. Um, all the heavy lifting is done by the books in terms of setting, world building, character development, moving the plot along. Um, the comics are more side stories. Fun side stories, but side stories. Occasionally stuff from those comes up in the novels, but it's smaller things. Like one of the stories involves a haunted car, and that incident gets referenced in a few later novels. Links to or you can get all of those will be in the show notes. And buying anything through those links helps to support the show. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>